It is my privilege and pleasure on behalf of the Award Selection Committee to present the 2012 United States Energy Award to John W. Rowe, Chairman Emeritus, Exelon Corporation. If one's career can uh, be judged by one's friends, I have had a very great career. It is a real pleasure to be here today and get this award done. Things that uh, might have been just one more thing a year ago start to have special meaning when you have that word emeritus uh, after <laughs> your title, but, so I appreciate this very much. I went to Thailand with USAID, I think, in 89 on one of your very first trips. The Hungary trip that Bob mentioned was important, important in a number of ways. First, to George Shazdi and I went over planning to help them with great policy questions on adapting to markets. They weren't used to building residential customers, and they thought designing billing systems might be a good idea. And we allowed us how we had found that useful, and uh, <laughs> would be happy to help them. Uh, and it was also fascinating, the people we talked to were actually very sophisticated about what the needs of a market economy were going to be for their company, and they were boldly committed to it, even though they had only three years earlier come out of a total central plan regime. They did, however, have what we all have in our organizations, which is cultural resistance factor. In their case, it was the operators of their nuclear plant who thought the whole thing was a mistake. These people ran Russian machines, were trained at Russian colleges, and nuclear folk are pretty comfortable with a top-down regime. So they weren't sure this whole market thing was, was a very good idea at all. And it is ironic, I think Central Maine later worked with Bulgaria, if I remember right, and ComEd worked with Poland because that was a natural connection to Chicago. Uh, but the other thing I want to say about the time in Hungary is something you wouldn't expect. George Shazdi was a senior vice president at New England Electric, one of the kindest, gentlest people you've ever worked with. George was a Holocaust survivor. He was Jewish. He remembered being beaten up on his way to high school learned to be a boxer, partly just to protect himself from the white high school. In 42 or thereabout, late 41, early 42, his father was put into one of the shock battalions that Hungary offered to the German army for the Russian invasion, and very few people came back from those shock battalions. They, they were supposed to die, that was their role. Um, and a little later, George and his mother were locked in what was then the Budapest ghetto. Uh, in late 44, George was on his way to a death camp when American planes uh, strafed the transit camp. And he and his cousin were able to get to the Russian army, which was by then only a few miles to the east. George at 11, followed the Russian army to Berlin, went back to Budapest, found his mother, one of the few remaining living Jews in Budapest. George ultimately shot his way across the chain bridge in the 56th Revolution. That much I knew. But we were walking through Budapest on the obligatory tour, and I said to the guide, isn't there a Holocaust memorial here? And she said, of course. I said, can we see it? She said, it is not on the tour. I said, how far away is it? Two blocks. So we went. It's a ruined synagogue. We walked around the corner. I'm sorry, I can't tell this without cracking up. George looked at me and said, when he saw this ruined synagogue, my mother and I were locked here. So 
that Hungarian trip I will never forget. In fact, it isn't mostly because of how you collect residential customer bills. <laughs> uh, I really do appreciate this award today. Uh, uh, this has ended a 28-year career running utilities. During that time, I have tried very hard to keep the lights on a little better, to keep the nuclear plant safe, which is an unending task, to make our operations a little greener, and whatever happens with this EPA rule or that one, any utility executive who doesn't know that getting greener is essential is missing the boat. To try to make our operations more diverse, gas is clean. And it's the greatest blessing this country could have is to have a relatively clean, low-carbon domestic energy source. It is the shale gas fracking and our current gas supplies are the most disruptive game changer that I have seen in 28 years. Everything I learned in the first two and a half decades is now. And I leave that with you because this is an organization turning itself with public-private partnerships for common ends. Cheap gas is very bad for Exxon. It's very good for America. And we we better not waste this one. We have too many challenges. We better not waste it. Thank you all.